Hello, and welcome to Faith, Final Drafts, and The F Word. I'm Darla Phillips, a host and producer, along with fellow screenwriters Sarah Hopkins and Rebecca Williams Spindler. Join us as we share our experiences navigating careers in film and television. Add in the twists that we're women of faith entering into life's second season, and you might find yourself mumbling under your breath. Good luck with that, ladies. Hmm. Follow along for some guaranteed laughs, a cry or two, and some valuable screenwriting and industry perspective. Anyone with a dream will enjoy this podcast video. Hope you join in. And remember, we got to enjoy the journey. Right, well, welcome back to Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. This is our finale, our season finale. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> How did we make it? I don't know. <laughs> Nine episodes. Well, I should say eight legit episodes and one blooper that we'll, <laughs> we're considering if we're going to put it out or not. Just we will. say there was a bug. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. We will. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you know. your friends aren't really your friends. So the topic we're going to cover today is what's in a title. And I know, uh, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my people, my friends, have been very curious about the title. And I feel like this is the right time. I like that we kind of went through the season. We've kind of, I think, shown by our actions, our, what we talk about, what the title means. Um, and I feel like we're going to dive into it today, dissect it, fate, final drafts, the F word. What, how does that all play into writing? Um as a woman of faith. And uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna kind of crack into that today, but before we do that, me the hands talk. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, let me get the hair on the Yes, hand. let me get the hair <laughs> For the finale. <laughs> Learn a lot about yourself by, oh. by watching this. It's yes. been so fun. Yes, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. And horrifying. Because yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to kind of touch on that. Like, <laughs> oh, we have learned, I've learned so much about mm -hmm. myself, my energy, my my mom's right. I need to calm down. <laughs> you ladies, though, are classy. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a spaz. Well, but. you're very zen off camera, though. I, must say. I know. I think so. I think it's there's a lot. Of, it takes a lot of energy to do this, and and maybe that's something people don't know. Like, like it's scary. Well, you know? It is. <laughs> that little red flashing lights. A little. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> like, you guys. Yeah. Yep. This is. This is documented forever. When I don't edit, it's out there forever. <laughs> so nice, <scared. laughs> oh <my> <laughs> Exactly. But we'll get more into that too, I think, as we go through um, our, get on to our topic. But before we do that, I wanted to take another minute to um, thank the people who have been supporting our podcast and giving us awesome comments and sharing our, our pod with people. Um, I wanted to share a couple comments that we've gotten in. Um, so this one came into our um, Apple pod. Still it's a mystery. Don't know who it was. <laughs> There's just these initials. But I'm assuming it's a female. Said uh, She said, these ladies are very relatable for anyone embarking on a creative pursuit, especially those finding passion after surviving the intense family years. <laughs> and then she said, highly recommended. So that's awesome. Yes, there's one. Thank Those you. were intense years. Yes. I'll have yes. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then um, I just have to give a shout out to Ken Miyamoto because he is one of our biggest fans. He shares our podcast every time they drop and um, gives us a cute little review. And I just want to share one. He just said, uh, uh, hey, screenwriters, check out another amazing episode of Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word, inspiring words and discussion for novice and experienced writers alike. And then he mentioned it was a great episode. It's a great one. <laughs> so thank you, thank Ken. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Ken is the best champion of of women and writers and people that are emerging and people that have made it. That dude yeah. just, and he's from Wisconsin. And he's from yeah. Wisconsin. Like, yeah. And he's a screen yeah. yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Ken. I so appreciate it. This last comment I'm going to share um, is from a friend of mine who she has really been letting me know every time we drop one, how much she loves them. Uh, but she said something in this comment that I thought was so interesting. Um, so I kind of broke it down. It was a long one, but she started out. I sincerely love the podcast. It's very warm. It has a very warm and unique feeling to it, which makes me happy because that's what I feel like we were going oh, for. Or unique, guys. <laughs> yes, unique <Yeah>. and warm. <laughs> warm. <laughs> or, <laughs> or 
I mean, glycerin yet? Yes. <laughs> We're not glycerin. You're right. We are warm, day. <laughs> um, but the part that I love, because she and I had been talking about the title, like we were going to talk about today, and, and um, we were talking about the faith piece of it. And her comment to me was, don't worry about the faith part. It should be interesting, especially if you address the fact that all three of you come from differing backgrounds and that emphasis on common bond to spirituality without the need to pass judgment on one another's beliefs um, and how awesome that can be. And what's funny is I thought about this. We have not really gone into the fact that we are all of different faith backgrounds. I've had people who thought, you're all Mormons. Sorry. <laughs> so I figured we might want to, you might want to like distance yourself from me. <laughs> oh, um, but the, I, the baseline is that we are Christians. Yes. So I, I think yeah. that that piece, I feel like, yes, we is are definitely the, yes, the we all But Christ. very different denominations, very, yes. very different cultures. Very different. But I, I think that is one of the cool things about this podcast is that we, what those differing, faith backgrounds, we can still come together and we can still um, have common ground, find common ground. And um, so I thought we did need to address that. We, we haven't done that yet. And so I think um, we'll do that in our next piece that's coming up. Next. <laughs> so when, we, when we break we down. We them segments now. Segments. Like, segments. We, know, we know what we're doing. Yeah, that's because, right. Because <laughs> when we first started this, it was very much the, like, let's just document our emerging writer journey yeah, yeah. and the, how this whole thing goes. And, you know, to hear comments like that, it's like, this is worth it. Yeah. Like, yes. this well, whole thing is a thing. Like, it's It's inspiring, people. It Even my own Amazing. son. I, I, I want to share my son's comments. Oh, my sweet boy. He shared the kindest comments on Facebook about me. But then he said in there that I was humble. I'm like, dang it. I wanted to, like, take his comments and repaste them on my <laughs> Like, she's that's, that humble. That yeah, wouldn't be very humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even it's not just women. Uh, oh, my! One of my husband's friends from high school. He calls John and says how much it inspires him to. He's you know every everybody has a story, yeah. um, inspiring him to write a story. But the funniest thing was my mother. So so getting into the title. So my mom when she heard the title. Faith, final drafts, and the F word, of course, my mama did not <laughs> like that little F word part. And there's a lot of people in my world, I'm realizing, who don't, they, it's nothing, they don't know what it means. Like, they're like, what does it mean? Are you going to be dropping F bombs during your podcast? Which, no. You're really lucky that I have it. <laughs> yes. I, I've edited it very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrible habit. It's a terrible habit. But but I think that that just goes to show like what that what that is. And and we yeah. kind of talked a little bit about the F word part of it. Like you know, and we've we've kind of morphed it into like why would you say the F word? Usually it's out of frustration. Yeah. And out of yes. you know just that feelings. Yeah. You know, and the F word of the feelings of either frustration or whatever you're yeah. dealing with when it comes to this kind of journey. Yes. Exactly. Or your prior military and have a potty yeah. <laughs> working on it. So back to Tina, my mama. So when she heard about the title, she's like, Darla, I just wish you didn't have that in your title, that F word part. But um, it was so funny. She watched the first episode and she's like, I get it now. Yeah, and, um, and so I'm hoping... People who've been following are understanding and getting the title, but just in case, we are going to be a little on the nose today and dive into and dive into Sarah's the title. going to drop all the F bombs. <laughs> just kidding. We're just kidding. We have to make up first season's words. Exactly. <laughs> She's going to let it loose now. Mm -hmm. So I figured let's start with the faith, faith part of our title. And I'll start out. I'm going to um, talk about my faith. Um, what it's like as a woman of faith writing real and authentic stories <clears throat> and the parts that come easy and the parts that are hard. Um, and I also want to get into why I'm a woman of faith, a Christian in this 21st century, 22 years into this first century. Why are we Christians? Yeah. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so for me, I think I mentioned before, I grew up in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, been in the church born in it, still in it. Um, ancestry goes way back to the beginning, to the roots of Joseph Smith. Um, so I've been in this church a long time. Um, doesn't mean I haven't had my faith moments. We've all had our, our moments where we, um, yeah, we got to figure out, figure out, figure mm -hmm. out our own beliefs. Figure out I think we're always in faith discovery mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. If you're growing your faith, you should be. Yes. yes. Always growing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I guess for me, writing 
as a woman of faith, especially from my faith, the, you know, the Mormons or the LDS people, um, we're a very connected group of people, not just in our communities, across the whole world we are connected. And um, so it does put like this kind of weight on me, like when I'm writing. I want to write something that's real, authentic, that's, that reflects my experiences in life. But, but I don't want it to be something, um, I don't want to let people down, you know, I don't want it to be something like, oh, Darla wrote that. <laughs> and um, so there's, I definitely feel a little bit of this pull sometimes, but I think I have um, balanced it pretty well. I found a little sweet spot for my stories. I call it the, um, it's where the ideal meets the real. And for my comedy stories, it's this vein of comedy that I feel like everybody on earth can relate to. We all have this ideal we're striving for. And then the reality. <laughs> and there's this really funny where you can get lots of funny nuggets. And that's where I really focus in to find my humor in my comedies. Um, and I think that I've found that balance. And, and later we're going to get into what we write and I'll kind of break that down more. Um, okay, so why am I a woman of faith in this century? <laughs> when, when I feel like a lot of the world is telling us why, you know, why do you still believe in God? Why do you still believe in Jesus Christ, and um, growing up in a in a faith that taught me I could have that personal revelation, that personal that personal connection to Him. Um, that's what made me who I am. That's what makes me love everybody. I don't care who I go. So here's my thing. That is why, as as much conflict as there is in being um, a faithful person nowadays, it's what made me who I am. And it goes deeper, I'm sure. <laughs> no, don't make me cry. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm not very emotional right now. No. <laughs> that's, that's one of the best <laughs> things about being transparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's hard. And, and sometimes we feel like we have to put on a facade a little bit. Like, you know, who's going to see right. the real me? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like that's one of the things when you really meet a, a true Christian, they, they live their faith out loud and they stumble out loud yes, and yeah. they're going to, you know, like my whole fail forward thing. Like I, I put that into so many areas of my life, mm -hmm. but transparency is, is so huge. And I think that's yeah. one of the reasons that we've all connected yeah. so well yeah. is that we're pretty transparent. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's not much we're hiding from each other. You, here. you, you all know, so you see it now. <laughs> you see who we are. It yeah. is. And, and that's, you know, having the baseline of being a Christian and mm -hmm. being transparent with people and, and seeing people struggle and seeing people um, try to figure out next steps in life, you know, when, when you're a Christian that's, that's walking the walk, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was the part that I didn't get for many, many years. Yeah. Um, so my, you know, talking a little bit about the, the faith journey thing. So I am, um, I was uh, raised as a Lutheran here in Wisconsin in the, in the Midwest. And bless my mom. She, she was very devout to church. We went to church. I had to wear pantyhose. I hated them. <laughs> it was a church was not a, a good experience for me. And, and again, I'm being very transparent mm -hmm. when I say this, because this is the same conversations that I had with my daughters as I raised them up as Christians. I didn't understand. And, and some of it, and this is nobody's fault. This is just my journey. This is my mother has been praying for me forever. <laughs> Thank goodness. That's probably why I'm here right now. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, growing up, um, having to go to church where it was a check the box kind of faith mm -hmm. thing for me. Um, I, I kind of knew I believed, but I wasn't quite sure what that looked like. I wasn't sure how, how that was really supposed to be lived out. My mom was an amazing example. Um, but I was very rebellious, obviously. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and going into the military, um, where I met all of these very different people and having these huge, amazing experiences. And, you know, I, I felt a presence, but I really wasn't, you know, growing my faith. I didn't really make it a part of my lifestyle. <clears throat> and other lifestyle choices. You know? <laughs> and, and that's just part of my journey. And everybody has their own journey with it. You know, just like you have your own journey in writing or your career or whatever. Um, you know, usually it's not a constant upward trajectory. You're going to do the ups and downs yeah, and all that yeah. kind of thing. Um, so then uh, going through a divorce and then going through the process of being remarried, we were like, we just had this feeling that we wanted to get married in a church. And there was a lot of churches that wouldn't marry us because we weren't members of the church. Yeah. And so it was like, again, that confirmation sometimes of like, you know, looking at what faith is really supposed to really look like mm -hmm. versus religion. Yeah. 
and spirituality versus religion yes. and, and how some of those kind of bump up against each other mm-hmm. for your own personal journey. Mm-hmm. So we, by the grace of God, had this amazing church that the pastor was like, you know what, let me just hear your story. And thinking about how this ties into hearing people's stories and how that opens doors to, to inspiring other things. He just, he sat down with us. He's like, give me your story. We're like, well, here's the deal. We're both divorced. He was getting ready to go back to California. We weren't going to be a member of a church here. And he was like, well, are you going to grow your faith there? And we're like, well, yeah. And he's like, well, I'll marry you, which was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so we got married in a church and it was a, a wonderful experience. And we ended up out in California and tried a couple churches out there that were Lutheran churches and just, it didn't feel like I was growing and granted it was just a couple of churches and we were invited to a Baptist church, which, <laughs> so <laughs> all you Lutherans out there, we, we, when we sing, we put our hands in our pockets and we cross our arms yeah. and we sing and we're very, not all this. Yeah. And so we went to this Baptist church that was all this. And it was a, an amazing experience. Long story short, um, really, uh, you know, starting off, a relationship with my new husband and knowing that faith needed to be a part of that. And it all started with a pastor listening to our story. So we flash flash forward when we were out in California, had this, you know, I had my babies out there and having children is really what it was the thing that clicked. Like I finally understood the father's love (laughs) for me, you know, having somebody love you unconditionally. And that was what just totally kicked off kind of my faith journey. And that's really when, when I started walking alongside and living a little bit of a different life, even though I'm very flawed, <laughs> I, we all awesome. stumble. And and so much of yeah. it is just that, you know, he's, he still loves me at the end of the day. And guess what? I got another day yeah. tomorrow. And I love that. I love, I love when you talk about rebellious. I always, I tell my children, my grandchildren, I you call it a free spirit, rebellious soul, whatever it is. I've always had to find out things for or you want to have a lot of fun. <laughs> That's what it's about. You're figuring it out. You're finding your way, your relationship to God. And um, and also, I think the beautiful thing is, is recognizing that everyone has their own path. And even, if, even for people who aren't Christian, I honor anybody who believes in a higher power. Whatever it is, I am. I just think that is really what it's all about. That mm-hmm. that we believe in something maybe bigger than us. <laughs> yeah. So and you choose to live your life a different way because yeah. of that higher power. Yeah. And you know, it. it <laughs> I've seen it so amazingly impact my life and just this ripple effect of mm-hmm. other people in my life. That you know, this it's the most important relationship you will ever have. I tell that to my girls all the time, like no husband, no friend, no whatever will ever trump that relationship. And it's something that you have to continually foster Mm -hmm. and that's growth and that's journey. And that's hard. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes you throw it down. (laughs) Yeah. Growing pains, man. Growing pains are hard sometimes. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Becky, you're you're in the hot seat now. (laughs) Um, Okay, so I, I can relate to both of your, you know, faith journeys about having something in your youth that kind mm-hmm. of rooted you, that yeah. gave you that reassurance that no matter how crummy my life was when I was 16, mm-hmm. I always had God's yeah. love in my, in my life. Yes. And, and that's, you know, rooted you. Mm-hmm. And then for you, you know, having a new journey with a new husband and your children kind of brought you closer to mm-hmm. your God. So for me, um, I was raised Catholic. I had two parents of two different faiths, and so I had my mom who was Catholic. She's Asian, so uh, Filipino Catholics, mm-hmm. one and the same. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad um, grew up in a really small mountain town in Virginia, and so he was Presbyterian. Mm-hmm. And his uncle was the pastor of the church mm-hmm. that he grew mm-hmm. up in. So. Two different faiths, but similar belief mm-hmm. in, you know, to love one another, love your neighbor, treat everybody right, yeah. and and be loyal to your faith. Mm-hmm. And so um, my husband and I, uh, we grew up in the same church. Um, I didn't know him until later in high school, but I grew up in a suburb where the Catholic church was pretty much the hub of that suburb. Mm-hmm. Huge 5,000 membership. Catholic Church, and so we were confirmed there. Um, we got married there. We had our daughter baptized there, and then we got our house. 
we moved out of the community a little bit, and there was this church in our backyard. And so from the time that we were married until probably 10 years into our marriage, we just kind of floated by the whole Sunday worship thing, mm -hmm. right? You know, Christmas, Easter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you didn't show up half an hour before Mass, you were standing room only in the back. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt I was one of the numbers. I was just one of the masses. And I kind of lost my connection with my faith because the message just kind of went right over me. Mm -hmm. And this church that was in our backyard, literally in our backyard, um, was a Congregationalist church. So they're kind of in the United Church of Christ vein, if you will. And it was a beautiful church. And we decided one Sunday when my daughter was like five years old, we got dressed up and we literally crossed the backyard and went into this church. And the moment that we walked through those doors, it was just like coming home. Mm -hmm. It was just this feeling of warmth and welcoming, nice. and there were so many other young families with children the same age as my daughter, and so the kids all bonded instantly, mm -hmm. and the thing that kind of took my breath away because I was raised Catholic was, it's a female pastor, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's in the whole garb, mm -hmm. get up and everything, and I'm like, oh, how's mm -hmm. this going to go, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But it was Pastor Cindy, and thank mm -hmm. you, Pastor Cindy, and and we were just so uplifted by the end of that worship service. And I had to learn the lingo. It's not mass. It's worship service. <laughs> and, and it's um, not Eucharist. It's communion. It, it, it took me a little while. To There's so transfer. many different culture things. I know. Yes. I had yeah. that same experience. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, in the congregational church, there's no stand up, stand up, sit down, kneel. You sit mm -hmm. and you stand and you sing. Sing a lot. <laughs> yeah. Sing a lot. Um, but, yeah, so the one thing that stood with me with my congregational fellowship is there was such, it felt like family because you had the seniors, which kind of are like your surrogate grandparents checking in on you. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that were, you know, in their 50s, so they were kind of like your surrogate parents. And then you had all this bonding with other moms and dads who are raising their kids around your same age. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I mean, to this day, some of my best friends are people that I met from church. Mm -hmm. And we watched our children grow up together and they went to church camp together. But the thing that really helped me realize that these people weren't just friends, that they were actually here to be on your life journey with you. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was 24, I was diagnosed with an incurable disease. And so this disease requires me to have frequent hospital visits and clinic visits. And when, and I used to teach Sunday school through um, the Congregationalist Church. And so these senior ladies, they used to have a women's group, and they would do a sewing circle. Mm -hmm. And they presented all of us uh, Sunday school teachers with prayer shawls, mm -hmm. hand crocheted mm -hmm. prayer shawls. And I keep that prayer shawl with me, and I take it every time that I have one of my hospital visits because that is them with me to help me through what I'm going through. And I know I have their love and I have their support. And some of these ladies have passed. Mm -hmm. oh, so I still have that shawl. This is going to be one of those ones. <laughs> so, there are tears. Like, Ooh, there are tears. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes me so grateful that we just took a chance and just walked into this church yeah. that we had no affiliation with. We didn't even know anybody there. And it just changed our lives. It really changed our lives. Yeah. But flash forward 19 years and this big, beautiful church that was in our backyard just last year, we had to sell it. We had to sell it because our congregation went from 250 to literally 25 people. And we've lost so many over the last, you know, 18 years that it's it's been sad because that church in our backyard is a beacon mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And we are now in a little storefront. So we're, we're limping along <laughs> as a church, but we're not limping along as believers. Mm -hmm. Our belief is still so strong, and the 25 of us, when we do get together on a Sunday, it's just like coming yeah, home. That's, so it, yeah. we're struggling, as I think there's oh, a lot of so churches so that many are churches. struggling. It's, it's, yeah, it is. It's yeah. difficult. And yeah. that's kind of goes back to... But that's why I'm still a Christian in the 21st century, so, because this is not 
just church friends. These are family. Oh, to yes. Me. Forever friends. Mm -hmm. Forever friends. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. I believe mm -hmm. that our relationships go on forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So sorry, winter friend with me. You're yeah. going to be forever. <laughs> you never, you never shake me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that's probably one of the best things. And talking about like coming back and what home feels like, I forgot to mention this with our, so when we actually state got, we, we, got off of active duty and we came back here as reservists to be, we wanted to raise our kids near family. Mm -hmm. And when we came back, my husband and I prayed about it and we really felt called to go back to this church where, where that pastor said, you know what? We'll marry you. Yeah. And interestingly enough, that became kind of a part of a ministry for all saints, which I think is such a cool thing. Like it opened so many doors and, Oh my goodness, we got back to that church and I've met my best friends, same yeah. exact experience. Yes. And, you know, as much as it didn't really necessarily feel like coming home because it was so different than our church in California, because we went back to, you know, the Lutheran mm -hmm. denomination. Um, it, I grew so in so many ways because I've really felt called to serve mm -hmm. and being called to serve in a church is something that doesn't really come unless you've kind of grown mm -hmm. and to grow as much as we did in California to yeah. come back and then, you know, serve in this church. And it, 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 it does, it, it is a family. And interestingly enough, I actually go to a, an assemblies of God church now. Um, but I still do Bible study with, with the ladies <laughs> yeah. at all saints. And those are my prayer shawl yeah. mamas, you know, yeah. like these yeah. ladies are, there's, they've, they've been amazing. You know, my mom has moved up North. And so it's like hanging out with my mom, my mom, mom friends, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and, and they're great. Yeah. And they know all of our families, you know, just the generational mm -hmm. part that being a part of a church. Uh, you know, that's, that is part of feeding your faith. Yeah, but I want to say, so I think the magic of the three of us from different faith backgrounds. Um, so, so my friend, she's like, she, she's like, there's something special about you three. She's like, she's like, you guys are the future. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we can come together and create a space for ourselves. And I think yeah. we're, I'm hoping we're going to find more and more and more. <laughs> but, so let's move on to the final draft. So we covered the faith. So I feel like, and I and I don't know about you guys, but I really do need to let the people who love me, the people that are rooting for me, know what I write. I mean, I kind of tell them, but they haven't all read my scripts, obviously, so they don't know. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'm going to just kind of give a little dive into the genres that I've written, the types of stories I've written. So, I'll, I mean, I have, I'll start out with the very first script I ever wrote was or is an action thriller based on a true story, um, based off IP of a book that my husband wrote. So it, I've done an adaption of his book. And I did and a lot, a lot, a lot of drama and my own spin on it. Um, but that was a, a story about, uh, that was a true story that happened in our lives. And it was, you know, based on something um, personal. So that's what got me drawn into the, into the screenwriting business or the business of the screenwriting and that is the story most people know about me so whenever they they're like is your movie is your movie done is that is that <laughs> and I'm like oh yeah well I've done like way more scripts since then <laughs> um so that uh, and then I, I have another um kind of a mystery thriller that's based off of another manuscript that I wrote um so that's another kind of adaption adaptation I guess and then I have three comedies Th and I, these are the ones I really need to talk about because um there, there's two that are that do deal with my faith. Like I grew up a Mormon, so a lot of my life is inspired by the moments I lived. <laughs> and so I, I like, it, like I said, I find that little funny vein where the ideal meets the real, and that's where I find my comedy. But it's very, um, it's, it's fun, and it's, uh, I mean, good nature. I think I mean, one's a family comedy, one's a little bit more mature. I'm going to say what it is. People need to know. So, <laughs> so my title, the uh, Book of Morgan, is about a Mormon family who um, moves from Utah, so a conservative family that moves from Utah to L.A., and it's all of the hilarious um, adaption cultural so things. So funny. They, it's, it's a great script. Yes, yeah, and it's, it's a very great. sweet, and it's a uh, female, female voice, um, uh, the main character. They're all, the family are all characters, but the main character is a female. Mm -hmm. um, so very cute family story. And then the, I wrote that and was immediately inspired to write another one called um, the, Polygamous, the Polygamous Wives of Old Nauvoo. Now I know my Mormon friends are like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What? <laughs> so many red flags. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah, um, so, but definitely just keeping it fun. I think it's really interesting how your titles are very 
<laughs> wow kind yeah. of thing which I, I as soon as you say the titles of something I'm like ooh I gotta read that yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and you do you follow up with that in your stories and how you tell them and they are funny and they are not off brand I don't no, feel no. like so no, I feel like I feel like I have an authentic voice I feel yeah. I feel confident because I am that I am that voice I it, it, it's it's real because it's my my ancestors lived it or I lived it it's a real voice um, and so then I also have another funny comedy that's a female, you know, driven. I, most of my stuff's female driven, except for yes. that very first one. <laughs> the very first, like, wide open. And I'm working and on a I'm new comedy feature. Mm -hmm. who, anyway, who wants to go next with their... Tell us what's are Okay. Oh, me. Okay. Um, so, screenplay-wise, I have um, family features. I have a um, Christmas story about uh, a widow trying to raise two young girls on a farm. And... Um, her her husband has passed and she doesn't really know how to drive the tractor and all that kind of stuff. But it's got talking animals in it because, again, Sweet. I watch a lot of Pixar, watch a lot of Disney and stuff. So live action animation, I think, is the new genre for it. And there is a little bit on, you know, the faith because it's Christmas time. Yeah. And, you know, do you believe in what Christmas is all about or not? So that one's fun. Another one I wrote was kind of a young adult drama based on a girl whose mom has a pretty troubled past, hasn't really done the mom thing very well for her, and she was raised by her grandparents on a farm in Joplin, Missouri, when the 2011 EF5 tornado comes through. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of took a real event and based it on... Um, a music video, because I love country music, it's Carrie Underwood's Blown Away. So what would it be like if there was this 15-year-old whose life kind of sucks and her mom's not being good to her, what would her life be like if a tornado came and blow, blew all of her troubles away? And it's it doesn't turn out the way that she hopes. Oh, really? And then the, the TV stuff that I write, the yeah. pilot stuff that I write, is family comedy. Yeah. Um, because that comes pretty natural for me and so I like multi-generational stuff um, all of my scripts are multi-generational so I have the grandparents the parents mm -hmm. and the, the kids in it and I love writing all those yes. voices and stuff so yes they, I think we both are very um the, the, the comedy comes so fast I think um the first comedy the that I that so Becky and I have done a short version of it and I went I on a, I stayed on my husband's boat for four days straight peeing in a cup because he didn't want because he didn't want me to dirty the latrine or, or the head they call it the head, the head. and uh, you out and um but in four days Rip like took took from the the short that we had already and turned it into a pilot and, and that's when I realized comedy with a little bit of a tragic spin is my yes. thing. So, four days yeah. in a boat and I got it done. So. That is a tragedy. Yeah, it was great. And my husband, <laughs> oh, it was pretty gross. Yeah, my husband was done. He was, he was done dumping my, <laughs> <laughs> dumping my pee. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I had to get some, got to get those tears, get rid of those tears you're having. <laughs> so Sarah, tell us a little bit about what you, sure. Okay, so I, um, features, so feature films, which are, you know, that's that's kind of I can't even really say my bread butter. <laughs> that's what I enjoy writing. It's our... <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is kind of how I got started, especially for you know not living in the industry, knowing that to be a TV writer you have to oftentimes be there. Um, so I started writing features, uh, female-driven action. I know we've talked about this first. That very first thing that I wrote was you know military-inspired, female, very action blow stuff up like I'm all about it <laughs> like I love that kind of stuff which is that's kind of my voice um so that's kind of how I started I I do enjoy it I did I have written some pilots so I've done a YA dramedy and that was a, a very intense that project has gone through like four iterations <laughs> I had originally written it with four alongside my daughter this was it was just a way for us to really communicate and talk about life and we came up with this funny idea like literally at her sister's sixth grade band concert which was hilarious you know we're like giggling in the back you know and so I was like I gotta write this thing because it would be fun for us to write this together and it's warped into several different kind of projects I guess and it was 
the the idea, the general idea of that is what I worked on through the WGA uh, Veteran Foundation Program. And it I worked with a mentor on it, and it, it's turned into something um, very different than when it started. So, yes. And then I've also had to, I've gotten uh, paid to write a feature film that was um, done through a producer's, you know, notes. And so it was all their idea where I had to sit down and develop this thing with them and, and write it and get paid for it. And it was awesome. <laughs> very action driven, like very kind of gory in, in, a, in, a, in a weird way. But what's really cool is this, the female protagonist is a woman of a certain age mm -hmm. and she has not been able to have children. And the, the sister's, you know, been overseas and suddenly she finds out that the sister, something happened, the sister's gone and there's this baby. So she, it's very much the whole, like the action of finding the baby and who's the bad guys and <laughs> shoot them up and you know, <laughs> all a, this. It's a fun script. It's a, it, is, yeah, it was fun. so fun to yeah. write. Um, Spanx still in? Did you have to check it out? Oh yeah. The no, the Spanx is still in yes. there. Okay. Okay. She that. kills a guy with Spanx. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, like that was a, a really, you know, you wouldn't, you know, yeah. a lot of people are like, what do you write? I'm like, well, I, I can write some pretty, pretty yes. awesome action sequences. Yes. Like, it's so fun for me. Yeah. So um, in, in, in talking about, you know, how you create relationships with people. So there, there's been a producer that I worked with um, that had my original script um, in a shopping agreement. Um, it was a really interesting way how people that might say no or something doesn't work out comes back later yes. and I've had the opportunity with this producer to work on two different IP projects so one of them is um, a book series that I have adapted it was originally adapted into a feature I did a pitch on it I didn't we didn't do the script on it because we were trying to sell it and went to huge big companies mm -hmm. with huge big producers attached um, and then 2020 hit <laughs> and with 2020 hitting they kind of came back and were like you know everybody's going to streaming because nobody's going to the theaters and this right. this idea is very big budget yeah. so yeah like I can read the log line on it and that hopefully will help kind of explain it a little bit better than me actually really doing it. So the logman is in the name of freedom, a teen heroine leads a group of renegade gear breakers on missions to infiltrate evil 100 foot tall mecha robot enforcers piloted by altered humans. So it's YA sci-fi action. It's kind of in the vein of um, shadow and bone on Netflix. If you've ever seen that. So, so cool. it, it, it's been a huge project for the last two years <laughs> yes. so, like 2019 I think <laughs> I is when this project kind of came into my world so it also goes to show you like mm, it's, long <laughs> it's a long <laughs> and, and projects come in different yeah it's it's a weird it's it's weird um also because of working with this producer I was also um brought on as a writer to adapt a novel and that one I can say so that's Willow's Grove yes. just yeah. finished that the the script is with the producer right now to do some kind of final notes and then that will be going out and that has been an absolute dream nice. to work with an author um the previous book that I did I did not work very closely with the author at all um because it's a very different kind of genre but this book with Willow's Grove it was it was one of those things that was I felt very compelled to work closely with the author and really tell the story because it's a unique story in the fact that it's four women yes. of a certain age <laughs> and at a point in time in their life where they're saying, so now what? Yeah. And we are I kind of all yeah. like in that place right now too. So it was That's one of those. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our, yeah. The, it was, it was a, such an amazing experience to, to be able to do that. Mm. And so that's kind of, those are the my, my finished scripts. I've had I, a couple other you know small things that haven't really gone. I haven't really put them out in the world yet. Um, but yeah, and I'm working on a new thing now. So. Sweet. Yeah, so, which will be action driven feature. I gotta go yes. back to blowing stuff up. Yes. Like I yeah. spend time with the ladies. I'm like I gotta go back and blow yes. some stuff up now. <laughs> and I think that's the perfect segue into our third segment, the F word part of our titles. So um, we we talked about this in in our our blooper episode that maybe you'll see or maybe you won't if we ever release it but so as a woman of uh, yeah, faith trying to write action thriller or authentic real stories there comes a moment when you might have to write the f word <laughs> in your script and i will tell you i laugh the very first script i wrote which was a <laughs> it was an action thriller with drug dealers and plane thefts and I mean, 
and do you think I wrote a single F word in the first, <laughs> in the first version? <laughs> no, I laugh, I think about this, and I sent this out. People probably laugh. Like, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that you can tell a story without the F word, but I do think that there are some stories that you have to be true to the character. You have to be true to the to the story. Mm -hmm. And and that is where, uh, besides this whole journey is frustrating, it also is kind of symbolic of we can write in a gritty voice. We can have characters that are not so wholesome. We can still write about them. <laughs> and Darla did learn how to finally type the F. You. Yes. Okay. Oh, I, find, I, don't, I, I, I can't say it very well, but I can type it. Um, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm really surprised. I, I, I surprised that, that I haven't. Oh, I know that you haven't let a ball. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't let the ball. I think there is one when I in, in our blooper. I think you dropped one. Ooh. No. <laughs> We, we, we will see when I actually. Well, I'll cut it out though. <laughs> but maybe we, it was me. No, I don't know. Maybe you didn't. Well, I guess we'll have to say that. We had the big gold sensor to come across. The <laughs> That's right. We'll oh, have that yeah. sensor. Yeah. Um, but so I guess that is what I feel like. I need. I want like my family, my friends, my faith-based people who love and support me to know that I am a person that's lived. A unique life. It hasn't always been roses and balloons and rainbows. I've had some interesting hard things in my life mm -hmm. and for me to tell a true, an authentic story and I do use comedy to do it because I think that's just a way for me to tell some of the hard things in the comedic way. Um, I, it, it's part of who I am. It wouldn't be true to me or my characters or the story if I turned it all into a Disney, a Disney show. <laughs> well, yeah. So here to use a comparable, right? Um, so Disney might not be using swear words, but that character goes through an arc. Just yes. like every yeah. character yes. in a story goes. Just yes. like you personally go through mm -hmm. an arc. Like I said, yeah. I don't swear like I used to. That's part of my arc. That's probably <laughs> a good that's part of my arc. But I don't swear like I used up. to. <laughs> Get me upset. Yeah. It's in, you know, here's the thing. Like, that's not a salvation issue. No. So, yeah. And again, these are fictional characters. Yeah. You know, and this is the story part of it. It's, uh, well, that's what I like to do. I like to step outside of my, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, goody two shoes self <laughs> and write stuff that is very gritty and dark and kind of makes you gasp when you get to page four. Mm -hmm. But it's because. I know that I couldn't ever do that, but I created a character that's going to do all that mm -hmm. and more, and I have a lot of fun writing it. Yes. And I, I wish that I had done some of the things. You're good. I, I, <laughs> a lot of it comes from my own personal. But anyways, yes, you're good. You're the angel. <laughs> well, but I'm selective as to who I let read this, because mm -hmm. if I did le let someone from my church read this, they would be just probably like flabbergasted. <laughs> they don't understand the yeah. structure of story yeah, and like right. we were talking about character arcs and 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 flaws like your character has to have a flaw yeah. yes. you know and <laughs> that's part of what makes it relatable yeah you exactly. know, because and that's part of entertainment you're going to take a normal everyday flaw and you are going to shed a light on it and magnify it to make it so unique yeah. that you're like if you know, oh, I could never do that, or something like that. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, that's what that's what entertainment is. It draws you into a world, and that world has to be authentic. Because if it's flat, it's not a very interesting exactly. story. Right. And part of that is the color of language. Right. I like writing nasty people. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Do you like the? Ooh, I like to write bad badass. Nasty. Yeah. yeah I'm all about the badass. Like, yeah, yeah, I want a badass I chick all day long. Like Give her a gun. I'm just. <laughs> The rebellious souls, the ones who are just the rebels, I think, that are just going to be like, I don't care, do my way. Do my okay, way. so we were talking about the space that we feel like we're kind of having to create for ourselves. Where do we fit? Like, um, are we the church ladies that are just going to be crocheting and knitting? And blah, 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 blah. Or are we the industry, like, bad girls? You know, you know we're, we're, in, we're in the middle. Yeah. And it's hard because you, it's like, you don't want to sell your soul. Exactly. Which you know, we're not, not, not. I want you to know. We're not selling No, our souls. exactly. Yes. And and for, for, for people outside of the industry and what the industry culture is like, um, it could be really tricky. But, it, you know, the industry is, is is different culturally in each different kind of genre. Yes, you that's know? very true. So mm -hmm. it's, but it's, it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's competitive. 
It is very, yeah. and it's art. Yeah. So it's like you put all of those things in there, mm -hmm. and then you have all of the different people writing yes. all of the different things. You know, as much right. as we might not know our space, yeah. there's probably a lot of people that are like, well, I'm the blah, blah, blah that has the 14 different hats. You know, yeah. you know, everybody that's out there isn't the same. Exactly. And, and we are trying to carve a spot. Well, well, I also think like, so we are women of faith, but we are still very complex women. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. good days. We my have husband. days. We That's have my husband how complex I am. <laughs> we, yeah. have, we have <laughs> deep feelings. We might have bad thoughts sometimes. I, I just think to tell a real story, it's we have why to we're be good real. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like um, more and more women, faith-based women, are kind of like, kind of shedding the, whatever you want to call it, like that whole, like, I have to be perfect, mm -hmm. I must, you know, let's shed that right. and, be, and be real, and I feel like that's right. what, I feel like maybe that's what I'm trying to get There's at. Like, a, and it, it's so cool watching, yeah. you know, especially mm -hmm. <laughs> women yes. of faith really step out boldly, yes. and that's part yes. of the, that we, we bring that to the mix. And that's what I feel like if, if, um, if we want, if, if people of faith, if we want our stories and our voices to be heard, we do kind of have to walk into this, this space. Like I said, we're not selling our soul, but we're, you have to be willing and able to tell an authentic story that will resonate with people. And um, I, so I think that that is a big part of, at least for me, this, this stepping um, away from that I have, that it's not that I'm not, because we're all good. I'm still a good person. I'll always be a good person. I'll always be a Christ-like person. Um, but stepping away from this need to only present ourselves in a certain light or a certain way, you know, it's like, you no, know, we women, <laughs> we're all so different. We all have so many, so many stories. We don't need to be ashamed of mm -hmm. our backstories. We don't need to be ashamed of our future screw-ups, <laughs> we're going to try and avoid them. You know, we talked at our last episode that, you know, you need to keep your scripts in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. When you meet somebody, you want them to just get to know you. Mm -hmm. So for us, when we're getting to know people and networking in this business, I feel like I'm keeping my faith and my religion in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not going to blurt that out on the very first yeah, coffee no, meet, wouldn't. right? But, but I think as people get to know you and kind of see that baseline yes. and some of your yeah. stories, and then they might actually bring it up to be like, oh, you wrote something about Christmas and, you know, the birth of Christ. And how do you feel yeah. about that? Well, I'll tell you how I feel about it. Yeah. But I'm not going to blurt it Anytime you introduce yourself, you just, you, you just be normal. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to have your, <laughs> I belong to the church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, my characters might do that, but I do not do that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, you're right, but I feel like that it's, it comes from your actions and in the way you treat people. And um, I'm, I'm with you. You don't need to be on the nose with that. That's something that should that'll come out eventually. Yeah, you know, just be a, a light, you know, yeah. and that's, that is, you know, what we are called yeah, to be. And, and whatever, wherever God plants you, yeah. you know, that's, and he gives you dreams for a reason. Yes. Um, yeah. So, all right. I think we kind of covered our title. We broke it down, Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. Hopefully anyone who was wondering why we would choose such a title, mm -hmm. I think it's because it represents us, who we are, what we're trying to do um, as women of faith over 40. <laughs> um, so before we close up today, we just want to talk a little bit about the journey we've had so far. We started, um, we did our very first Episodes back in October of 2021. Oh, yep. 2021. We did three episodes on Sugar Island. So fun. It was yes. so much fun. And, and I was having a little bit of a panic attack about it. Yeah. Let's talk about. We did. I will say these girls. Okay, <laughs> they have. I lo what I love about Sarah and Becky. <laughs> I was like, hey, let's do this thing, and uh, they're like, sure, let's do this thing. <laughs> they had no idea what they're getting in for. <laughs> I, I had like this idea of what I wanted it to be and I, how I wanted it to feel. I knew I didn't want it to be like all the podcasts that are out there already on screen ready because we aren't exactly <laughs> experts yet. So we didn't want to come across as these people that I, I just wanted to be something unique mm -hmm. that shared our journey. And, and I didn't know quite what that would be. Didn't know until we got there and we did it. And I think we captured, captured it. Um, it's definitely unique. 
It's organic. It's organic. And yeah, I and just, and people really are resonating with what we're sharing. I feel like we are giving them good little tidbits to use on whatever journey, whether it's writing or whatever dream they want to pursue. So so I think let's I don't know, what are some of the highlights we had that weekend? Um, it freaked me out because everything about this is so unscripted. Like, we kind of yes. have, like, topics that we're going to talk yeah. about. But and, and the unscripted it. part of it, <laughs> when you're looking at yourself, <laughs> I can't get out a full sentence to <laughs> save my life. And I, I can't memorize my anything to save my life. <laughs> yes. So it's like, where's the cue cards? What are we but, talking about? Yeah. But I also knew that we're screenwriters and we needed to be writing our scripts, not writing hours yeah. of no. this. No. And I think it's really organic. Of it. <laughs> it's more like, I don't know. So yeah, no, I, you guys are brave. I just think. That you're brave. We're brave because it was it, it was a leap of faith, and um and I promised them if it turned out really bad, we would just <laughs> yeah. She was awesome. <laughs> like it was really nice knowing that at least we had like eyes on it before it went out into the world. <laughs> She's like, and I'm like, can you cut off my fat arms? <laughs> I've cut off many fat arms. I wish I could cut off fat necks. No. No. Find a way. I know, but I did see these tapes. <laughs> <laughs> very comfortable with who we are. <laughs> <That's not. laughs> we figured out, uh, I don't know, we're weird, or I am, these guys aren't, but, um, but we're all weird. We're yeah. All weird. <laughs> Super weird. Yeah. But I also want to touch on a little bit of like, it, we, we did have some angsty moments, like when we didn't see eye to eye, but I love how it seems like we handle it well. I think anytime you're collaborating on anything, whether it's a dorky podcast or in a room or writer's room or you are going to have to deal with a little bit of that like oh okay she's pissing me off <laughs> it was probably me pissing you off no no no, no. I just think personality yes. we're all control free she's the only one in control <laughs> no, 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 no I'm no, just kidding everybody, everybody has veto everybody well, and that's but that was that was one of the that's the only that, way you could do it yeah yeah but, that we could come and be like, ah, yeah. and you've been awesome at editing and oh, knowing, yeah, knowing us well enough as fitting. well, right, and true. knowing us well enough as friends to know, minutes. like, if you said something that probably could be misconstrued or yeah. whatever, like, you, you knew us well enough to take out yeah. all this stuff that we, we might have want... regretted. Well, so that first week, I will say that first three episodes, we had no clue what we had. So <laughs> Sarah, everyone, Sarah's like, this is crap, and I'm like, no, I didn't want to say that. No, no, but I thought it was crap too. I didn't. I didn't want to say it. I was like, this is this really is what bad. happened. <laughs> and I'm like Switzerland. And I'm like, it's okay, guys. Like, so so I'm just, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't even know what I got here, but I'm saying it's good. And then I, I, was, I was like, well, we should try that again. And she's like, nope, we're going. We're just going. Like, yeah, that, this style is just, you just go for it. Otherwise, it'd take us 30 hours. Um, so we got through that first set, and uh, and we found out. I put together a little. I'm like, okay, it's pretty good. It's okay. It's all right. So we decided to meet in Mission Viejo in January and do our next three episodes. That and was so that was so awesome. And, oh, yeah. I, and I think back how amazing it was that you two flew out to well, Mission Viejo. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, 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 December. Who something. wants to leave Wisconsin <laughs> in January? Like, no, it's because you love me. Nobody signed Don't, don't yeah. my dream. It's because you love me. <laughs> well, we love you. We love you too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. yes. And, and so, we, so, so they come out to Mission Viejo. I don't and, get on a plane for just anyone and everybody has this drama kind of true, yeah yes i know so true. And you had and becky had oh you both everyone on. had so much life stuff going on at home and to leave it and so did and, you yeah oh yes that yeah. whole month was so 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 crazy mm -hmm. but so we're out there yes mm -hmm. and your lovely sister amy and her husband put us so up yes. sweet they, yeah I, and i love oh my gosh i feel like i, I was in my parents' home. Yes. You know, yes. like when you just go to a place and you're yeah. Tina and Natalie. Yeah. yeah. You so have some amazing family members oh, that are perfect. just so open armed and, yes. you know, yeah. like that's, Thank that's, you. that's a gift. I love them. And, yeah. and they're all encouraging for this. Yeah. Yes. 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 Like, oh, big, big fans. They're the oh, biggest fans. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my goodness. Yes. And Larry loves, he brags on us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all yes. this Way to go, to Larry. Watch, watch the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, the, but it was so funny. So when, I, when I've invited you guys out there, I forgot that my they have two puppies. And I was like, oh, how are we going to do this with those puppies? Because every time a FedEx truck goes by, every time a UPS truck 
goes by, they're like, ah! freaking out. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. This podcast is going to be a constant, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> bark, fest. bark fest. So, you know, we were laughing. So, <laughs> so we said our little prayers before our little podcast and that everything would go well. And, um, and amazingly, yeah, yeah, the dogs seconds. didn't bark yes. once, not one time. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, our prayers are answered. <laughs> yeah. Our prayers are answered. <laughs> well, come to find out. My sister Amy, she must have been had the same fears I had because she knew the dogs were noisy. I guess she had slipped them a couple, a little uh, CBD cookie. <laughs> we were like, God answers prayers. It's the funniest thing is when well, we went to dinner with, with Cam, we told him that story and he was like, well, God answers. What did he say? And of course we were, oh, that was hilarious because I'm like, wow. And my sister was our little angel that day. Yeah, <laughs> yes. That was awesome. Yes. Thank you, Ernie. Yes. 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 And then that whole time we had so much fun. And then we, we went into Hollywood because you had a meeting mm-hmm. with a, your, one of your produ- a producer of one of your projects. Mm-hmm. And so that, le- so we, we, we dropped you off at the little coffee shop. Yep. And, yep. and Becky and I were like, what are we going to do? Well, it was, it was a street. <laughs> In Hollywood, and I made you take my picture underneath the house. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so she was in a, in a wine place. Yeah, or, yes. yeah, 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 it's like, like, a, like yeah, a bistro yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she, she's in there, yeah. and on the same block, at the end of the block, was this <gasps> blue bakery. Yeah. And we're like, oh, look. And the name of the bakery was Sweet Jesus Cookies. <laughs> and being ladies of faith, we're like, oh, let's go support the local bakery that makes Jesus yes, cookies. So cut to. Yes, cut to what's happening with you. Me and, and my meeting with this producer, and we're talking about the area, because he lives around there, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the neighborhood's kind of changed ever since they put the dispensary right down the way. And I was like, huh? And he said, Sweet Jesus Cookies. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, like because they were like, we're going to hit that while you're in there. And I was like, oh, who are you? Meandering over to the front door, and, and there's a security guard out front. I thought, wow, really? Why do you have a security guard for <laughs> Sweet Jesus cookies? <laughs> and he looked at us weird because we're, I mean, we. And then he asked our driver's to... license. We couldn't even get in the bakery. <laughs> yeah. so we showed our driver's <laughs> license. Not a bakery. So we Not walk a bakery. in. <laughs> like, we walk in, Jesus. and the smell. <laughs> and I'm looking, and the dudes over on the counter cutting the whatever, cutting the cookies. <laughs> they look at us. And we look at them, it's like church ladies looking at the the <laughs> mirror on our cookie guy. <laughs> yes. It was this awkward And moment. the security guard, who's like seven feet tall with his bulletproof vest on and everything, yeah. is like, oh, I think you want the other yes. We farther <laughs> We just start <laughs> laughing and turn out. And he, he's laughing. He's like, oh, yeah. there's a real cookie store. But I was just laughing because it was just like made for movies. When, it was. And so yes. I believe you guys... We're leaving at that point in time. They are, we're in the car. They like pull up, and I walk out, and my eyeballs are like this big. I was like, "Did you guys go there?" And they're dying laughing in the car. And I was like, "They really they did go there. They're laughing that hard." And then they so out of contact. I just was standing in the doorway. Of the big <laughs> yeah, it was like, Phew. and I just it just was so funny. Oh, oh it, it was priceless, dude. And it, and, it, and it goes back to my we. I really do think one day we need to create go to sweet Jesus cookies for real. Well. <laughs> Just when we write, we need to we need we need to create our own little sitcom of <laughs> yes. our lives. A trial <laughs> based off of this IP. I think we one day we need to do it, yeah. and we'll do it maybe there at that little. Uh, yeah, sweet Jesus. Sorry, my sorry, my Mormon ladies. I won't go. <laughs> I'm just really kidding. thought it was a bakery. <laughs> and honestly, like we should show a picture of what that looks like. Oh. We should pull up the picture because. Yes. I, I mean, if you didn't know, know. Like, it did, you, I had no clue. I was really blown away. We were very churchy. Uh, it was hilarious. So we really were like the oddballs there in Hollywood. <laughs> that was so fun. But anyways, we've had so much fun doing this. Um, we had so, so many, many great memories. Yeah. And we've um, got to know each other so much better. And, and like I said, I, through all the editing, I feel like I could be your psychologist or psychiatrist. <laughs> I, I kind of know all of our, I don't know, like our, our, um, our what do you call it, uh, Ticks and our Idiosyncrasies. nervous things that we do, and then um, so I don't know. It's been amazing, and we'll see. We're we're hoping to do a season two. Um, we're gonna all right now. That's the plan. So yes. hang in there. there. We'll be back. Yes, we'll be back. And send us messages on the Facebook page. Yes, let us know that you love us. Not that you know that we're not writing porn. <laughs> <laughs>
my god. <laughs> that, is, that is an epic way to end it. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> See you guys next season. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for season one. Thanks for hanging in to the end. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to tackle in season two, give us a little message at our Facebook page with the same title, Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word. This episode of Faith, Final Drafts, and the F Word was filmed and recorded in Oshkosh. My gosh. Sarah hosted, along with her chickens, Bucky, La Diabla, and Colonel. Bok, bok. Bok, bok. <laughs>